the mic. We're here for our uh, first episode of our spring series. Smell it in the air, mate. It's all here. How good, mate. Good to be here. Uh, <laughs> paycheck landed again, so so I'm back. And I'll tell you what, we're raring to go for a uh, cracking spring carnival, mate. Yeah, Pumped. It's exciting. Even though we're all in lockdown here in Sydney and the, and the folks in Melbourne, um, you still feel it in the air. You can smell smell the flowers coming out and you just know it's time to punt, don't you? Oh, I don't know about the flowers, but I know it's time to punt, mate. Fair thank <laughs> uh, Look, um, hey, great episode ahead of us, Mike. We've got tipsters of the month taking a look at the top five and the top five media. We've got um, uh, a great... Uh, section uh, session on how the fuck did you tip that? I'm going to leave a surprise there to who that is. Um, we're, we're talking to none other than Nick Quinn from Tab yeah, and Herald yeah. Sun. Absolutely. Oh, at least top five headers in the racing game. So right. second exactly. to Munzee. The most famous, <laughs> second to Munzee. The most famous head of hair in racing. Absolutely. Yeah, and they, uh, he's flying at Flemington with the Maccabi Diva stays coming up. What a great time to talk to him. And uh, look, we're introducing a new section where we're looking to get feedback from punters uh we're asking we're going to be asking each week how do you punt uh and this week we're looking at uh, a very topical uh subject uh which is which is very important for the start of spring so hey um if you're watching this for the first time you can move the chapter along uh, along below here on youtube to go to your favorite section go forward and back subscribe so you get notified as soon as it happens Mike, is there a better resource, a better video resource for horse racing tips that are flying in Australia than this show? Oh, it's fantastic, mate. At least we get to know who, who's on top. Uh, everyone's out there pushing themselves. We push everyone, mate. Let's give everyone a wrap that's doing well. So you, you're purely independent um, and yeah, you, you're going to find plenty of punters that are low flying. So that's what we're here for. That's it. Exactly right. And yeah. Um, uh, everyone you're going to see on the show, uh, if you go to the site and search for their name, you can follow them, see their stats. It's all there, thegreattipoff.com. Mike, uh, every month we look at the tipsters of the month. Um, and for punters that don't know, every media tipster you can think of uh, is on the site. If there, there's one that's not, let us know. Uh, and also uh, pro punters and punters. So what a better resource and who's better positioned to say who the tipster of the month is. Fair enough. Yeah, let's do it. Who we got? Let's do it. Okay. So here we go. Uh, putting the leaderboard up there. We've got the top five this week. Some interesting stuff, Mike, before we get stuck into them. Um, four of the top five pro putters. Uh, well earned, by the way, and you'll hear why in a second. Um, and four of the top five come from which state do you reckon, Mick? Oh, mate. WA? WA. WA absolutely flying the West. When they say best best is in the West, I'll tell you what, they might be on to something there. Let's take a look through them. Uh, Mick, you're going to love some of this stuff. Latham Anderson. Uh, listen to this, mate. Targets WA country races with, you know, two-year-olds to three-year-old races. Um, reason why is there's very little data to go off, so bookies often get the prices wrong. He's watching trials left, right, and centre for those races, uh, for those horses uh, that uh, participate in those areas and in that age bracket, um, and not getting intimidated by prices. Have a look at his average price there, uh, make fifteen dollars seventy one. It's unbelievable. But here's the thing: when you see fifteen seventy one, you normally see a strike rate. You'd be lucky to get in the low teens. He's yeah. almost at thirty percent. He's almost getting close to striking at one and three at fifteen bucks seventy one. Check that up. How good's yeah. that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll be all over this, Blake. He's flying. Um, Ogle Twig, we've seen him before. SA uh, Punter. Look, when you keep seeing these names, you know something's going right. Um, you know, they don't do that by accident. So William Franklin's a new one to the leaderboard, but certainly has been consistent. And here's your mate again, uh, Mick. Peter McCormack, the bookie from WA. Outstanding. What a guy. He's a gun. He got 85% um, pot, profit yeah. on turnover, that is, in uh, in August. Um, from a decent number of tips. Again, look at these average prices, $8.46. And there he is again, mate, number five, uh, Chris Blackwell from mate. Oz Race, the guys at Oz Race. So mate, that's, that's, just, that's some serious punning there. So well done, lads. Yeah. Outstanding. Absolutely flying. Um, so we, we're just going to have a quick look now, uh, Mick, at the uh, at the top five in media. Again, yep. you're going to see some names you know. So Chris Blackie, he was fifth 
Chris Blackwell was fifth uh, on the overall leaderboard, but he actually topped the media tipsters. Um, so he's there from ozrace.com.au. Um, Tony Wickards, look, I think Tony's, this is be his third or fourth appearance in a leaderboard. Uh, yeah, you're mate from the SBS. That's it. From the, he's also an actor and does uh, knows how to punt, that's for sure. Late night. No mucking around there. Uh, Glenn McFarlane from uh, Herald Sun. He's always popping up in our daily leaderboard uh, shout-outs and weekly shout-outs, so no surprise to see him firing there. Remember, he goes well. Yeah, he goes well. And who's this bloke in fourth? Um, uh, actually, yeah, the, the Sultan, just flying. Sultan's so, so flying, standard. Yeah, standard. So, you know, spoke about how he's having a big 2021 20, and he comes out in August and just does it all again. And uh, race call for our ascent, of course, Rick McIntosh there. Uh, the, voice, the voice of the bull, isn't he, Rick? What's that, mate? He's the voice of the bull, isn't he, old Rick? Yeah, he is, of course. I think they stuck a, a statue he's, up. Uh, isn't that a gutsy effort to be calling those races? They, they, they go around for about 13 minutes. <laughs> and he just, he's got nothing left. If, if, mate, if, if so, some of the jockeys out there are giving as much to their horses as Rick gives to those calls, fair dink. No, absolutely. How good, how good does he go? Mate, if you get a statue put up for you at that age, at young age, you, you the do statue. It. I I believe I'm gonna to have to check myself now. I'm sure there'll be a whole bunch of people writing in to tell me I got it wrong, but I'm pretty sure there is. Oh, Bill one anyway. <laughs> especially after yeah, that effort. Done. Especially after that effort. All right, so we're bringing back that uh, favourite segment of punters. Uh, get a lot of people saying how much they like this. It, it, it's called. How the far did you tip that? And it comes from exactly what it sounds like. Whenever you look at the price, you see someone jumping up and down. You see a lot of social stuff going on because someone's got it right. You, you look at it and you think, how the far did you tip that? Now, this week, Mick, you're going to like the, the person we got set up to ask. Uh, they, uh, last, race to, last race in Sydney, someone tips a $45 pop in Sydney. Here's what else went all over Twitter and declared it in their best <laughs> bets of the day. And it's none other than What's play up? your own trumpet. Doing it? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> so I'll give you, I've, I've had to buy you a case of beer to get me on the segment. Yeah. Anyway, it's no, something. No, um, look, I, I got to tell you, I think it was, look, I, I'm just kicking myself I didn't look because I needed to get out too. Um, but I was on a tissue. I thought it was going to have the goods. It's all around the turn. It's, uh, failing at the back of the back of the field, um, I I hear Soldier of Love still at the front, battling on, and straight away I sort of you Mick, and so I have to ask you the question: How the fuck did you tip that? Oh, she's still six off the lead at Soldier of Love in front, just from Big Boy Roy Ashman Zarek. A tissue. She's coming very late, but it'll be too late, I'd say. Soldier of Love just in front. Soldier of Love. Soldier of Love won the last beat. Yeah, it. look. Ripping, what a ripping way to finish the day. I think by that stage I was about 0 and 4, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a uh, bit of a nightmare. But that was the last last bet of the day. And mate, how did I find it? Well, pretty simple. So um, had had the eye on one eye on the weather uh, early in the week, so you can see that there was going to be rain coming in. So I was definitely looking for something that was going to be um, on pace, something that could handle a rain affected track. You know, it was banking on the rain coming in in the afternoon anyway. So around that 2:30. By that stage, the rain obviously does its trick with the track. Uh, it's gonna be hard to make up ground, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You saw with the tissue and you know those sort of runners. But nonetheless, the horse was probably rated around twenty three dollars. Um, so going a bit of a deeper dive then. So found it was a runner that was gonna be in the right spot. It was rated around twenty three dollars. But going deeper into the form, it, it had its second up form with Rachel King on a rain affected track. It just went bang. It peaked. It, it, it had already done it three times. Or t- sorry, twice already in its career. And it was ready to go again. So, look, it's obvious, it's an obvious gamble. But by the end of that and adjusting to all those um, sort of scenarios, based on if we got that scenario, I, I had it at a, at a $6 shot, right? So, assuming that it was going to run to that. And obviously, there's a bit of hope there. Um, but when you when you get that sort of scenario um, and you're getting, I think it was $35, right? And it drifted. Happy days. And here we are, mate. 45.70 best tote. I mean, look, it's certainly, um, so just to summarise there, Mick, I mean, you're talking about patterns there. You're talking about getting the right weather conditions. Um, but what's interesting there is, you know, we knew the we knew the track conditions at the time and, and, and it's still blue, but clearly, um, obviously other, other runners were getting attention in the race. 
Um, but interesting to see some of those patterns there, second up and so forth as well. So yeah, there you, you could, go. You could call it the perfect storm almost, couldn't you? The perfect storm. Or, or everything comes together, right? The, the holes in the Swiss cheese all line up, all that sort of thing. But certainly um, very popular on social media and uh, looks like you're continuing your run there too, Mick. So well done. Congratulations. Soldier of love. How the fuck did you tip that? Uh, you just heard it from Mick Gannon. Something for the battlers. <laughs> All right, uh, coming up to Flemington this weekend. Mick, out Flemington, how do you feel about Flemington, mate? Uh, in general, the track. In love, general, I mean, is love, it one of your favourite tracks? Love the joint. Love just the joint. Uh, like other than Ramley, Flemington just gets me so pumped. Yeah, oh, look, I agree. Oh. I Except for this dirty day where back in the day, weekend hustler was dead set going to win the Emirates for 100 yards and got, and then again, blast by 101 shot. Other than that, Flemington's a beautiful place. <laughs> it sounds like that's it's, it's oh. a bit of a scar on the scar on the heart there. But hey, um, what we wanted to do is find someone who's absolutely firing there at the moment. And look, this guy, uh, look, he, he's a character. I think he goes down as the, the famous head of hair in racing. He's proud of it too. And um, look, I caught up with him earlier in the week and uh, uh, got some insights into how he goes about doing his thing. Uh, and in particular, why Flemington is one of his favourites. And look, the stats tell. So for a good part of 2021, he's been absolutely shooting the lights out of Flemington. 35% profit on turnover. Um, tipping one in three, like one winner in three. Uh, so look, cer certainly a great reason to follow this guy. And when you listen to him, you've got to know. I mean, the old, you remember the old saying, uh, Mike, that, you know, uh, these guys in the newspaper, they just sort of throw a dart or the tea lady uh, picks the winners. I mean, if you want to know about a fallacy, then that is it. Because when you hear what Nick's got to say, you'll learn there's a lot, lot more that goes in on it. Love it. Keen to hear. Let's go. Let's go. So, punters, our guest this week uh, is the most famous head of hair in racing from the TAB and the Herald Sun. It's uh, Nick Quinn. Welcome, Nick. How you going, mate? Well, Damien, you know, I'm a bit nervous about the hair, actually, mate, to be perfectly honest, because I put out a tweet that might come back to bite me in the bot when Marcus Bonds and Pally looked to have the brown line middle at his absolute mercy. <laughs> the hair is going to be shaved, and I have to actually eat some of it oh. if he doesn't win the brown low. And since that point in time, he's gone from a hot favourite at about $2 out to about $4 <laughs> and barely got a kick after I put that out. So enjoy oh. this hair while it lasts. Although I must say, it is in need of a bit of a cut and colour. Um, but look, obviously, Nick, very exciting time of the year. You can smell spring in the air. Maccabi Diva states this weekend, Flemington headquarters. Although we won't have the crowd, we'll have, uh, we'll certainly have the excitement. The grass will be cut, the flowers will be blooming, all that great stuff. Happening, happening to look down the leaderboard for Flemington, last six months, pretty much a good part of 2021. And there's Nick Quinn with 35% profit on turnover. Uh, you're striking at one winner in three uh, with a nice average price of four bucks 11. So punters looking for someone to follow. Uh, you're, you're certainly standing out like a sore thumb. Flemington being uh, uh, with those great stats. Does that surprise you, mate? Look, I do love Flemington. And I think one thing that certainly helps from a tipping and punting perspective is it's normally big fields and quality fields. So you might identify a favourite. But there's still going to be about $4 because there's a big field of opponents and whatnot. And the other thing I like is a lot of horses get set for races at Flemington. So a lot of times the horse might have had a couple of runs, then they go to Flemington on that beautiful spacious track with a few runs under the belt, peak fitness, peak distance, so you know that they're there to win. So I do love Flemington, but I think the thing that you mentioned about the winning starting price average is a good reflection on the fact that if you do find winners at Flemington, you're normally rewarded. Because as I said, even the popular favourites normally go around at around that $3 and $4 mark because the field sizes are so good and the competition is so strong. Sometimes at other venues across the country, you get smaller fields and therefore you're taking shorter quotes on the favourites. The other thing I like is that runners normally get their chance. They're normally big fields, run at a genuine tempo. It's such a spacious track as well that rarely do you encounter traffic problems. And the track staff do such a brilliant job as well that normally there's enough sting out of the ground to suit horses, and it certainly does take the rain well should rain hit. So punters that like to bet on horses that need that sort of jar out of the ground get that. But if you're backing a horse that that could be their kryptonite, too much water on the ground, it normally levels itself out. So a few things that I do love about Flemington, 
and hopefully that luck can continue over the coming few weeks. Although this might be an early crow and a bit of a kiss of death. I might go totally cold after you give me a pat on the back. <laughs> oh, look, I just wanted to give punters a bit of an insight. I mean, you're doing lots of form during the week. You're pretty much appearing every day in the Herald Sun's columns there, uh, doing it a lot, uh, getting things right. Um, give us a bit of an insight uh, into what goes into preparing for, and let's let's make it a Saturday race meeting. Obviously, uh, a bit involved there. Can you just take us through the key steps, mate? Yeah, I actually find it easier to do it every day as opposed to take a week off and then come back and pick up and try and catch up what you've missed. So. What I do whenever there's racing, watch the races that night and then make notes on the horse. So next time that horse's name appears, I've got my notes ready to go. So that saves a lot of backtracking and it's just constantly updating the information and it's constantly evolving as you would expect. The challenges can be when there's horses that come from different form lines to race in Melbourne on a Saturday. And I do say Melbourne for me because that is the form area that I do cover in the paper each week. So if you've got horses from Sydney or this time of year, even from overseas, from Brisbane, from Perth, from Tassie even, then you've got to go back and look at the form. And that can be a challenge to assess not only how well the horse is going, how good the horse is, or potentially how that form will stack up, how they'll acclimatise and everything like that. And I know a lot of people do the form in Perth and they love it because you've basically got the same pool of horses every Saturday on basically identical track conditions each week where with the Melbourne races, it's a little bit different to that. It can be a bit more of a challenge, but if you can find the winner, you can be more rewarded as well. So what I'll do on a Monday, I'll start to look at the nominations. I'll go back through my notes and there'll be a few horses that I don't have notes on. I probably haven't done the form on them before and they are the horses that are coming to Melbourne for the first time. So I'll start watching a couple of replays, make a phone call or two to people that might be close to the horse to find things out because a lot of times it's a really nice horse, but Saturday might not be the day. It might be the kickoff campaign. The horse might be a little bit pudgy. They might want to spike second or third or fourth up into the preparation. So take that intel into account. Now, does that mean that they don't come out and win? Absolutely not. And we all get it wrong. And a lot of times the trainers themselves get it wrong when they've got a horse that they think will need one run or two runs or three runs sometimes before winning and they come out and cause surprises. But what it does do is help identify which horses you think will be there to win on the day and come into market support on the day. So if you're doing the form initially on a Wednesday like I do, and you've got two horses that you do like, and they're both about $6, but you know one is absolutely there to win, and the other one is basically having a pipe opener ahead of runs down the track, the second horse is most likely going to be $6 out to 16 where the first one is going to be probably $6 into $4.60 or something like that, and that's good to get the ball rolling. If you want to put something in the paper, say punters, have something each way now at the $6. By race time, when it's half its quote or firmed up a little bit, punters already feel like they've backed a winner. Yeah, Conversely, sure. if you still like that horse that a lot of people are not going to like for those circumstances, you can put something in your column, which I do say, wait till Saturday, don't like the quote now, have something late. Or if the horse gets out to a big quote, have something on. But doing the tips early has its upsides and its challenges. The challenges are sometimes by Saturday circumstances have changed. You might have liked a horse on Wednesday night or Thursday morning when you do submit your tips. So I do a column on Wednesday for Thursday's paper and then Thursday morning I submit all my selections, one, two, three and four for each race in the Metro meeting in Melbourne each Saturday. So sometimes things change. I might have tipped a horse and then there's unexpected rain and whatnot and then I'm thinking this horse no good on the rain and Unfortunately, then, there's not a lot you can do. Anything that you sort of got your eye on um, uh, in these early future markets? Yeah, there's a couple that I think will be hard to beat down the track. We saw how sensational Zaki was getting the job done on Saturday. If that horse comes to Melbourne, I reckon he'll definitely win his next two starts. I should rephrase that. I'm extremely confident he'll win his next two starts, that being the Underwood Stakes and then the Caulfield Stakes. So if you're working around some pre-post bets, certainly in the Underwood, I think he's going to be really well placed there. He's had the run under the belt, and he's a good anchor. From a Melbourne Cup perspective, Dawn Patrol, Pass mark for mine at the Valley on Saturday, still at around the $16 quote. Happy to have something each way there. I think a few pipe opening runs heading into the first Tuesday in November will be beneficial as well. A horse for the VRC derby coming over from Perth that's currently big odds called Cheerful Moment from the Lindsay Smith stable I think will run well. So there are a couple that I think might tick a few boxes and hopefully find us a winner or two in the coming months. Yeah, Damo, two things I'm desperate to do, get a cut and colour and have a beer at the races. <laughs> 
Cut and colour. Well, you're giving a bit away there, mate. I, we just thought it was a cut. <laughs> mm. I think the sunlight's giving me away. Good on you, Quinny. All the best, mate. Thanks again for your time, and uh, we'll look out for those uh, those selections as we go through uh, go through spring, mate. Cheers. Uh, Mick, we're going to bring a, in a, uh, a segment that's called How Do You Punt? And look, really looking to bring up some topics, uh, topical at the time, and uh, invite punters to comment. So whether you're looking at this on YouTube, uh, Twitter, or Facebook, or whatever it might be, looking for your thoughts, want you to show us uh, your intel. And we're going to start with Mick. I'm going to try and chime in a bit, and then we're going to throw over to you guys. And this week, uh, the topic is um, winter form versus spring starters so something that all punters are faced with you got those horses that are hanging over after winter obviously got the fitness edge mick and then you've got the the starters in uh, spring who you know typically might have that uh that class edge well not might are likely to have that class edge and how do you how do you line it all up so mick give us your view how do you how do you put all that together and come up with a with an answer Look, it's, it's challenging. It really is. And I think that, you know, everyone's going to have their own approach. And I think that probably the key thing here is not to be always drawn into the, those early prices. You know, horses can, like a nature strip as an example, um, went up $1.55 as an example. So you can really get sucked into those early. But in regards to doing the form, I, I think, you know, there's a couple of things you need to account for. Obviously, one is the class of galloper it's meeting all right so that's probably first and foremost the second one is um for me it is very much about the track condition the distance it's at and then obviously the speed map as well you know look i, I had egg on my face last week i was against zaki and nature strip just purely based off the, the simple fact that I, the, at the price i didn't like where they were at because they were nowhere near their peak egg on my face turns out they end up probably being potentially two of the best horses in the country at their um, peak distances this year. But in saying that, I'm happy to stick solid with the theory. And I think there's going to be plenty of um, horses that aim to group ones coming through. They're going to be but off the back of that really great laying opportunities now because punters are going to be heavily sucked in by those two last week. And um, it's going to give us a huge chance of uh, either laying them or, or getting some overs on some other runners. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, look, one thing I uh, tend to look at when, you know, I have that sort of uh, winner form against the, 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 the spring starters who are the, who've got the class edge is just looking at their pattern. You know, um, typically if they're a six, seven year old, uh, there's a bit, of a bit of a pattern emerging in terms of where they like to, um, you know, where they like to perform, whether it's early in their prep, as we see. But more just also too, Mike, I'd be interested in your view on that. I find as horses get older, um, you know, they, they their early form that might have been there as a sort of a four-year-old, maybe even a five-year-old, may start to dwindle a little. I'm just talking about early form. So whether they're winning first up or doing very well first up, might take them two or three um, starts to sort of get to that that form. Any thoughts on that? Oh, mate, I couldn't agree more. And that was probably one of the main reasons why I was happy to be against Nature Strip in the sense of we had... Um, you know, Wild Ruler, who was an up and coming sort of horse that needed to produce a big run to get into the Everest, where Nature Strip was only getting older, only its worst performances were, you know, ratings wise, first up. But, you know, there's an exception to pretty much most rules. And as, you know, he's come out and, and just gone crazy, he's improved significantly on his previous first up runs. But in saying that, and this is why a deep dive in the form and, and, and knowing is important, not just a deep dive into the form, which we did. But more so, Walla, uh, Walla comes out and says, this is the best I've ever had it, first up. Nothing's gone wrong this time. So, look, this just could be a classic example of, you know, we're just not aware of that and sometimes you lose. But, mate, spot on. The older they get, the more I'm willing to risk them first up. Well, there we have it, partners. We're looking for your thoughts now. I mean, uh, spring starters, class spring starters versus winter form uh, that, that presents well. How do you guys and girls judge uh, those two form lines when they when they come together or those two profiles when they come together. Give us your thoughts. Post it on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're seeing this. And look, hey, who knows? We might get you on uh, to learn a bit more. Yeah, get involved. Love to hear more. Well, there we go, Mike. That is the first show of our spring series. Uh, look, uh, exciting <laughs> times. Um, and of course, we're at Kembla this weekend in Sydney. So I have to throw, mate, you're red hot. So 
Punters aren't watching this part of the segment. They're mad. Uh, Kemba, M-A-D, mixed moral. Mad. What's that, mate? M A D mad. M A D mad. Absolutely. Mixed moral for Kembla Grange on Saturday. All right, so we're going to go race three uh, over the 2,000 metres. We're going with the Friedman trained cognac. Ah. 15 bucks at the moment. Yeah, so, uh, nice. you know, it, it, it's called mixed moral, but let's be honest, it's an each way moral. This one. <laughs> <laughs> well, extend the, extend the definition yeah. of moral. But, you know, win in the place, you know, do your thing. But, mate, look, this, this horse has been slowly improving time and time uh, again. First prep was obviously pretty garbage um, over from when, it, when they come from overseas. They're never generally that great, uh, especially from you know, UK or Europe. Um, second prep, it's getting into second prep now. I heard Freeman say not so long ago that it's sort of starting to get the key with it, gets up to a likable distance, gets a dry track, huge chance of going to the front uh, and dictating terms. JBO takes one and a half kilos off. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if if the money comes for this. It's 15 bucks now. I'm about to launch into it. Hopefully it stays around that price um, by tomorrow. But it, it, I think it'll start single figures and it's going to give a massive sight. There we go. It could, couldn't get a, a better rap than that. So there we go. Mixed moral, cognac, uh, Kembla Grange. Um, so, hey, may, may, the, may the run continue, Mick. Oh, um, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, look, very exciting times uh, coming into spring. Punters, this show will appear each week through spring. Uh, tipster, if you want to know who's hot uh, on the punt, on the tip, this is where you come to. YouTube, subscribe. Um, we also post it on our Facebook page, so you can like that as well. Uh, also, uh, Twitter, you'll get the, the shorts and so forth and links to the, uh, to the YouTube uh, page. Uh, look, without any further ado, we're going to see you again next week. Great punning on the weekend, Flemington, Kembla, and all the other locations across the country. Mick, thanks for your input, mate. Fantastic. Pleasure, mate. And remind all the punters, do your best. Jump on there on a Friday night. Um, heaps of good tips is chucking their tips in. I'll, be, I'll have my stuff up Friday night. I know Rick Morris will have his up. Josh Reed, Dean Watling, all the boys. Sorry if I let, left anyone out there. Ben Bear, all those guys, all flying. We've got a free best bets articles coming out as well. For all the tracks, Sydney, Melbourne, and the three best bet articles as well. Lays, market movers, all coming out. So don't uh, don't be shy. Check them out. Share them. Like, comment, do your thing, and um, most importantly, back a heap of winners. Back a heap of winners. Great stuff. See you guys. All the best. Great punting. Mm-hmm.